Hi, it's Anna Haferman, and today we're going to make a tuck stitch hat. Uh, this time we're using the inside of the tuck, so it gives it a nice crochet look. Um, this one I added a pom-pom. This one I didn't, made a kind of a wider brim on that one. So you can vary this and do lots of different things. And before we get into it, I want to thank everyone who donated to the Buy Me A Coffee link and to the YouTube thank you. Your donations really do help me to make more videos and I appreciate it. Thank you. So what I'm going to use is this Premier Basics DK. This is a number three light DK. Uh, this is a uh, inexpensive yarn that I had to order it online which still was fairly inexpensive. They uh, make several colors and this is yarn goes really well through the machine. Um, my machine likes DK or number three weight the best. So, and I have a trouble getting it in the big box stores. They just don't seem to have that much of it in colors that I like. So I've started ordering this online. They had the purple, this linen color. This one is called cream. This I think was called teal. I'm going to be using that teal as my waist yarn today. So I'm going to cast on from 47 to 47 and uh, knit with waist yarn. So I'm going to select every other needle from 47 actually over to 46 because we're getting every other one so that's so I'm going from from 47 to 46 and then I've got the waist yarn threaded and I'm going to go on tension four my carriage is in normal and I'm going to knit a row then I'm going to take my cast on comb I need two pieces I've got two pieces hooked together and then I'm going to hang that on the on these loops and let's see try to center it I'm trying to stay out of the shot so it's a little difficult to show So make sure you get every stitch there. And then select the uh, alternate needles, so the ones you didn't get the last time, and make sure you pick up that number 47 on this side, and select all of those. So you should be from 47 to 47. And then you're going to want to get this yarn out from there you just want you don't want to have a loop so i unhooked that on that side i did that off camera so then i'll just knit another row across and do eight rows total of waist yarn And then I'll just cut that waste yarn and I can get rid of it now and put start with my main yarn. Uh, I am going to put a clip on the end of this yarn to hold it down. So I'll set my row counter to zero. And then I'll knit um, 
let's see, 20 rows at tension four. There are actually 19 at tension four. Now, when I'm on row count 19, I'm going to set my uh, my carriage to tension eight, so that uh, I'll get a nice turning row. Okay, you probably can't see that, but I'm on tension eight over there, and I'm just going to knit row 20 with tension eight. Now I'm going to go down to tension 3.5 and do uh, 22 rows. And once your knitting gets kind of where it starts pulling in like that, you'll want to put uh, weights on the edges. and get up to row count 42. Okay, so I'm on row count 42 and now I'm gonna take everything off of the knitting, the weights and everything, uh, because now I'm gonna hang a hem. So I've got everything off the knitting, now I'll hang the hem, and this is how we've done it in a lot of videos. I'll go in here and I'll pick those bars, the white bars, and hang them on the needle bed. And I'm skipping the first one because you always end up with one less uh, bar than stitches and that's because you're, the bars are actually uh, not actual stitches, they're bars between actual stitches so you end up with one less. So you just hang all of those until you get all the way to the end and of course you can do these one at a time if you prefer but I like to do three at a time because it goes a little faster. So just do that all the way across and you see how it hangs and gets that turning row give you a nice kind of crisp edge. So I'll finish hanging those and be right back. So now that I've got all the stitches hung, I'm going to add some weight. I've put two on one on each side and then I'm going to use some of these. These are uh, a little wider and uh, heavier so I'm going to put uh, one there. They hook on really nicely too. And um, these you can order online. I can put a link as to where those you can get those. So just so you've got everything kind of weighted down because we're going to be doing tuck stitch and tuck stitch needs a lot of weight. So now we're going to start with our pattern right away. And um, I've just hung the stitches. I haven't done any kind of closing row yet. So starting from, uh, let's see, the second one in, I'm going to pick out every other needle. So not the first one, number 47. I'm starting on number 46. And then I'm just going to go across and do them all the way across. And I don't want to pick that last one. So not that last one. So everything except the last one. And then because this is going to be, these are going to be our pattern stitches every four rows. I'm going to mark these with the washable marker 
and uh, because that's going to help me to pick them out the next time just so I can make sure I'm in the right place. So I'm going to go across and mark those in one color. And I'm using red here. And I hope you can see that. Um, and I'm going to go all the way across and do every single one. And this is, even though it's just every other needle, it really does kind of help to uh, pick them out the next time. So uh, I strongly suggest doing this. And it really doesn't take too long just to mark them. And of course I'm using washable marker. I use the washable Crayolas, uh, the ultra washable ones, ultra clean washable seem to work the best. So um, you can get these almost anywhere. And since it's back to school time, you could probably find them on sale. So I'll just go across and do everything across. So I've got all my stitches, all my needles selected and marked. And now I'm going to set the carriage at tension six, and then I'm going to put it in hold. And on the LK150, that means uh, go to position one on this lever and keep that one on the triangle and one on this lever and that one on the triangle. If you're using the KX350, you would be on N here, H, N, and H. And it's the same thing. And you're on tension six. And now we'll knit two rows, but first I'm going to reset the row counter. So I'm on zero. And this is, this is going to be this first row that, closes up the hem and starts the pattern. So we'll do two rows, tension six. Two rows, tension six. So then that's our first two rows of the pattern. Now what we're going to do is push back these needles that we selected to position C, uh, upper working position. We don't want these to knit this time. We want them to, I mean, we don't want these to hold this time. We want them to knit. So we can put them back to position C, uh, which means they will knit the next time, as will the ones in position B. Then we will select every other, every fourth needle. We're going to use this tool, this side, and I'm going to start with the third needle in and pull that one. And then I'll uh, go across and get every fourth needle with this tool. And let's see now. I'm way over on the side, it's hard for me to see what I'm doing. So there, uh, we've got every fourth needle. Now when we uh, knit across, since we're in hold, it's going to hold all of these and it will knit all of these. Uh, everything in position B or C. But we're also going to mark these needles because every two rows we're going to switch between the red needles and the black needles. And marking them is just going to help us select. And uh, that's all there is to that. The washable markers really, really, really do help. Um, of course, you could do it without them, but they are inexpensive and it will really make your life easier. And these, once you're done, wipe off very easily with a uh, damp paper towel. So, um, and I've been, if you follow my videos, uh, you will see me using them all the time. Um, and if you don't follow my videos, you could like and subscribe, and that would really be uh, helpful to me. So click that subscribe button and comment if you feel like it. 
And now I'm done with my markers, so I don't need those anymore. I'll just put those off to the side. Um, but I will be using these two tools now every two rows. So I'm ready to go with uh, these needles. I've got them marked, and now I knit two rows. So I'm going to go one. And two. So that is our pattern, and that's what it's going to be throughout the uh, throughout the knitting. We're going to do two rows selecting the red needles and two rows selecting the black needles. So now what we have to do is push the black ones that we just held back to position C, because position C, upper working position, means they're going to knit the next time. Uh, and then we'll pull the every other, the red ones, right ones, yes. Um, so we pull every red, every other red one, or all the red one, all the ones we marked in red, we're pulling again. So we're going to do, that's what we'll be doing the whole time, is we're going to pull the red needles, knit two rows, pull the black needles, and knit two rows. And make sure that you don't pull that last needle. We want that to knit every time. So then we just knit two more rows. Push these back. And this goes pretty fast. Of course, I'm sitting off to the side so you can see what's happening. So it's a little harder for me to do, but if you're sitting right in front of the machine, it's, it's, it's much easier, so. So we pull all the black needles again and knit two rows. Okay. So we go back, so that's what we do. Uh, we go push back the needles, and you can do it like this, or you can push them in with the thing, whichever. Just don't go back too far or the stitches will fall off the, uh, or the stitches will fall off the needles, and that's why we only push them back to position C rather than position B, because the machine, when you're in hold, will read the needles in position B or position C as the same thing. So just um, know that that's what's happening. And then it will hold the needles that you pull out to position D. So um, we select the right ones no now if you do that and pull the wrong ones just go back and get the right ones and everything that's in position C is going to be fine so don't worry about that it might look a little weird okay so it looks a little weird because I pulled the wrong ones but you can see if I pull these out to position C then you have the correct thing so don't worry if you pull the wrong ones just push them back and get the right ones so two rows push them back and select the other so that's the pattern uh, red needles two rows black needles two rows here, okay. And this isn't, again, isn't too hard to see if you're in the right, if you're in front, but I'm sacrificing myself, my vision <laughs> for you guys. Okay, so I've got the black needles, I'll knit two rows. Okay, and we're, I'm just going to keep doing that uh, for how many rows let's see we're going to go up to row 73 so I'm doing here's my hem that's here 
so there's my hem this is the beginning of the pattern and then I'm going to go up to row, row 73 so I'll come back after a while after I get this done and remember it's two rows black push those needles back and then two rows red so just keep doing that so here I am I'm on row 70 and I'm going to do uh, three more rows of pattern so I'm going to push my red needles back and then I'm going to select my black ones And do two more rows. And now I'm going to push those back, the black ones. And I'm going to select the red ones one more time. So I'm going across and selecting all those reds. And this time, I'm only going to do one row in hold. So one row. Go across. And now I'm going to put my take my carriage off hold so um, to do that I'm going to push the lever the hold lever which is H back to two um, on each side I um, on both sides I really am only going to do it on one because I can't reach the other side and I'm going this way so it'll only matter because I want to knit everything this time so there we go it knit every stitch that time and now I can put that one back to normal now I will uh, transfer every other needle and uh, then I'll knit two rows and then I'm going to bind off so to transfer I'll start at this first one and uh, transfer it to the next one And what I'm doing is just pulling it off the needle and pushing it on the other one. And I've showed this in a lot of videos. Uh, you just hook your tool onto the needle, pull straight out, push straight in, and then transfer. And that's it. So I'm going to go across the row and do all of those. So I have every other stitch transferred to its neighbor and it turned out that the ones I transferred to were the ones I marked in red. So just make sure that you've got everything transferred. Every other one, sh you should have two stitches on every other needle. And now move back the, uh, the needles that um, ended up that you transferred from because you don't want to knit those this time so move those all the way back so that they don't knit the next time and then uh, we're in normal here we're just going to knit two rows and then I'll take my yarn and get a long piece long enough to go across and cut that and then I'm just going to sew this off and now all that means is I'm taking a needle and um, I am threading the yarn I just cut and threading that through and then I'm going to uh, sew all of these off and I find it's easier if I take all my weights off um, before I do it but only on the part I'm actually doing so I just move some of the weights 
from this side because these are the ones I'm going to get first. And then I'm using this long upholstery needle. Um, that way I can sew off a bunch at a time. And honestly, it's a little pointy, so I'm going to go through with the end that I've knit through. One, two, three, four. So I just get all of these. And I like this long needle because I can go through a bunch and get eight or nine or ten, however many, pull it through and then get some more. And these actually are interesting because they also, you can use them as a transfer tool because the eye is very similar. So I'm just going to go across and get all of those. And if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. If you uh, have questions, ask the, please ask in the comments. I uh, always like questions. And let me know if you do this project. So I've got all the needles, uh, all the stitches onto the gathering thread. And now I'm just going to take the project off of the machine. And to do that, okay, so let's see how it came out. So here's, here it is and it's just kind of a rectangle with some waste yarn so first what we'll do is take off the waste yarn and see how that looks so to do that uh, you just find that last stitch and cut only the blue yarn so not don't cut any white yarn just cut the blue yarn that last stitch and then come over this side and this top thread just start pulling on that and that will um, that will release it just keep pulling there we go and now we can take off this waste yarn and we see how we have the brim and the hat now what we're going to do so the top was sewn onto this gathering thread and that's eventually going to be cinched up but sew it up first now here's the back of the hat and you notice it has a little texture but it's not much the front or actually this is the back but we're going to use it as the front the front has quite a bit of texture so and because it's tuck it's um it's got a nice uh thickness to it as well so we'll sew up i'm going to sew up the side here so i'll start in the back and sew those back pieces together and then loop around and sew the front pieces together and then go up the side with mattress stitch. So to do that, I'll need a darning needle. So to sew it up, I'm gonna start over on this, this side here on the inside and just pick up, I'm gonna go one stitch in. Remember we left an extra needle and then I'm going to pull pick uh, two, am I gonna start? let's see, we're going to, I'm just going to pick two bars each time and mattress stitch that way. Um, I find that looks just fine and it's less, takes less time than doing it one bar at a time. I'll just go two, Two, 
and two and go all the way around and then uh, when we get to the pattern it's the same thing although it looks a little different so I'll show that when we get there so um, to sew it up now we're on the pattern we're just doing the same thing we're going on this side we're picking up from where we came in we're picking up two bars we're going to go over to this side and you see there's two bars there pick those up go over here to where you came out two more bars now we come over to this side and this is where it changes a little bit you come in where we the yarn just came out of you can kind of see where that is and then you go in here and it crosses so you're still picking up two bars but they're crossed so just do that then go up here pick up these two bars and then go here and let's split a little bit pick up those two now here go up here so we're picking up two bars and we're coming down here going to where the yarn came out of you can see if you tug on it a little and here it crosses so we'll pick up this one and that one one two okay and then go up here pick up one two and then come back down here where we came out of you can see it I'm just gonna get those one two go let's see we've got one two down here is where it's gonna cross we'll go one two so we're doing the same thing it's just they look different come back down here now it's normal so we're just gonna get those two so just take your time sewing it up and it'll end up you'll end up with a better finished project so we go this is where the yarn came out of right there and then we're going to get that one and that one they're crossed so just keep doing that and make sure that your seam doesn't get too tight so what i do is i i tend to sew it tight and then I'll just stretch it out as I go so I'll finish that up to the top um, and then we'll go from there so I'll go two so I've got it sewed up and these this is the uh, seam is right here and then that's the yarn that came from the seam uh, I'm going to put that in the inside of the hat and I'm this is the yarn that the gathering yarn so I'm just going to cinch that up just keep pulling on it until it cinches up nicely so and then i'm going to just sew that so to do that i'm going to uh, come here and just these are some of the original uh, loops i'm just going to go back through those and pull so you get it so it closes up and then I'll go I'm gonna go in from the other side I'm gonna go through here and then start closing it up from the inside and just sewing it together so it closes up really really nice and then just do that and then uh, secure that pretty well and once you've done that you can tie it off with uh, 
this thread that came from the seam. So that's that, and then it looks like that from the top. So now I can put a pom-pom. I can either put a one of these fur pom-poms or a yarn pom-pom. I'm going to do the fur pom-pom for this. So uh, I have these buttons that I got. Uh, I'm going to sew one to the inside of the pom-pom. And uh, these came in a lot of different colors. These are these little wood buttons. I'm going to pick that blue one and sew that on. So I'm going to sew this button to the inside of the hat. Now I can do either way if you want it plain. They're plain on one side. The holes are a little small, so I got a smaller needle. Uh, and just thread that with the yarn, which is not that easy to do, but you can do it. There we go. So I just thread a piece of yarn, and then I'm just going to sew that button to the inside where, where I gathered, uh, because the pom-pom is going to, the pom-pom has an elastic, uh, piece that will hook on to this button. So just secure that. And you could sew this on with thread if you wanted to. Um, then I'm just going to tie it to the other thread a couple times so that it's secure. And then I'll just cut those. And I'm not even going to worry about hiding those ends because they pretty much will hide under there anyway. So now, now I've got my latch hook and here's the pom-pom. Let me back up here a little. Okay, so the pom-pom has a, has an elastic, elastic loop on it. So I'm going to go it, with my latch hook. I'm going to go into the middle of the, uh, where I gathered it. And I'm going to grab this, uh, grab that loop, close the, close the latch, and then just pull it through. And there we go. So I've pulled it through, and then all I need to do is just hook it onto that button. Okay, so here is the hat. And because the pom-pom is on there just with a loop of elastic, you can undo that and wash the hat without the pom-pom because the pom-pom is not going to go through the wash very well. Um, and that's that. So there's your hat. Pretty, uh, it didn't take me very long, even with all the hand manipulation. So try it out. Let me know what you think.